Zia Rahman was an army general who served as the seventh president of Bangladesh from April 21, 1977 until his assassination on May 30, 1981. Zia was a leader of the Bangladesh forces during the country's liberation war from Pakistan in 1971. He had broadcast the Bangladeshi Declaration of Independence. He also led the Z Force Brigade. After the war, Zia became the deputy chief of the Bangladesh Army. He rose to power after the country's first military coup on August 15, 1975, in which Sheikh Mujib was killed. A series of counter coups resulted in Zia gaining de facto power as head of the army under martial law. He took over the presidency in 1977. As president, Zia founded the Bangladesh Nationalist Party. He reinstated multi party politics and free markets. Zia became a popular third world leader for his efforts to stabilize Bangladesh and championing issues affecting decolonized nations. He improved Bangladesh's relations with the West, China, and the Muslim world, and departed from Sheikh Mujib's close alignment with India and the Soviet Union. Domestically, Zia faced as many as 21 coup attempts. He was criticized for passing the Indemnity Act and removing the ban on religion based political parties. Zia was awarded the High Gallantry Award of Baratam in 1972 for his wartime services. He retired from the Bangladesh Army as a Lieutenant General. His party, the BNP, became one of the two dominant political parties of Bangladesh. His wife Khalida Zia, a former Prime Minister, is the current chairperson of the BNP. Early life, Zia Rahman, popularly known as Zia, was the second son of Mansa Rahman and Janara Khatun. His father was a chemist who specialized in paper and ink chemistry and worked for a government department at Writers Building in Kolkata. As a child Zia Rahman, nicknamed Kamal, was reserved, shy, quietly spoken, and intense in many respects. He was raised in a village named Bagbari, in Bogra, British India. In 1946, Mansa Rahman enrolled Zia for a short stint in one of the leading boys' schools of Calcutta, Hare School, where Zia studied until the dissolution of the British Empire in South Asia and creation of India in 1947. With the partition of India, Mansa Rahman exercised his option to become a citizen of a Muslim-majority Pakistan and in August 1947 moved to Karachi the first capital of Pakistan located in Sindh, West Pakistan. Zia at the age of 11, had become a student in class 6 at the Academy School in Karachi in 1947. Zia spent his adolescent years in Karachi and by age 16 completed his secondary education from that school in 1952. In 1953, Zia was admitted into the DJ College in Karachi. In the same year he joined the Pakistan Military Academy at Kakul as an officer cadet. Equals marriage to Khalida Majumdar equals. In August 1960, his marriage was arranged to Khalida Majumda, the 15-year-old daughter of Iskander Majumda and Tayyiba Majumda from the Dinajur district, in a simple ceremony. Zayal Rahman, a captain in the then Pakistani army who was posted at that time as an officer of the defense forces. His father, Mansa Rahman could not attend the marriage ceremony, as he was in Karachi. Zia's mother had died earlier. The wedding reception took place after one year in the then Hotel Sheikh Bag, which later became the PGM-7. In Pakistani military, graduating from the Pakistan Military Academy at 12th PMA Long Course in September 18, 1955 in the top 10% of his class, Zayal Rahman was commissioned as a second lieutenant in the Pakistan Army in the Army, he received commando training, became a paratrooper and received training in a special intelligence course. Zia went to East Pakistan on a short visit and was struck by the negative attitude of the Bengali middle class towards the military, which consumed a large chunk of the country's resources. The low representation of the Bengalis in the military was largely due to discrimination, but Zia Rahman felt that the Bengali attitude towards the military perhaps prevented promising young Bengali from seeking military careers. As a Bengali army officer, he advocated military careers for Bengali youth. After serving for two years in Karachi, he was transferred to the East Bengal Regiment in 1957. He attended military training schools in West Germany and UK. 
He also worked in the Military Intelligence Department from 1959 to 1964. Ayub Khan's highly successful military rule from 1958 to 1968 convinced Zia of the need for a fundamental change in the Bengali attitude towards the military. During the Indo-Pakistani War of 1965, Zia Rahman saw combat in the Kemkaran sector in Punjab as the commander of a company unit of 300 Euro 500 soldiers. Zia Rahman won the prestigious Hilalai Yurat Medal. Pakistani Euro Unregistered Trademark S Second Highest Military Award, and his unit won two Satara E Urad Medals, and nine TAM GHA E Urad Medals, for their role in the 1965 war with India. In 1966, Zia was appointed military instructor at the Pakistan Military Academy, later going on to attend the Command and Staff College in Quetta, Pakistan, where he completed a course in Command and Tactical Warfare. Zia helped raise two Bengali battalions called the 8th and 9th Bengals during his stint as instructor. Around the same time, his wife Khalida Zia, now 23, gave birth to their first child Tariq Rahman on November 20, 1964. Zia joined the 2nd East Bengal Regiment as its second in command at Joydepur in Ghazipur district, near Dhaka, in 1969 and travelled to West Germany to receive advanced military and command training with the German army and later on spent few months with the British army. Pre-liberation, Zia returned to Pakistan the following year, during political turmoil and regional division. Upon his return, Zia was promoted to major and transferred in October 1970 to be second in command of the 8th East Bengal Regiment stationed in Chittagong. East Pakistan had been devastated by the 1970 Bola cyclone, and the population had been embittered by the slow response of the central government. The political conflict between Pakistan's two major parties, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman's Awami League, and Zulfi Karali Bhutto's PPP. In the 1970 Pakistan parliamentary elections the Awami League had won a majority and its leader Sheikh Mujib laid claim to form a government but Pakistan President Yahya Khan postponed the convening of the legislature under pressure from Zulvikar Ali Bhutto's PPP party. Bangladesh Liberation War of 1971, following the failure of last-ditch talks, Yahya Khan declared martial law and ordered the army to crack down on Bengali political activities. Sheikh Mujib was arrested before midnight March 26, 1971, taken to Tegain International Airport and flown to West Pakistan. Zia, who already by then geared to revolt against the government of Pakistan, was preparing to defect, and later arrested and executed his commanding officer Lieutenant Colonel Jinwa, revolted and broadcast the announcement of the Declaration of Independence on the evening hours of March 26, 1971 from the captured Kalahat radio station in Chittagong which read, This is Swadhan Bangla Batar Kendra. I, Major Zia Rahman, Provincial Head of the Government, do hereby declare that independence of the People's Republic of Bangladesh. On March 27, 1971, a second broadcast was read, I, Major Zia Rahman, do hereby declare the independence of Bangladesh in the name of our great leader Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. Later in an interview with German radio, Zia Rahman talked about his March 27 announcement. Zia organized an infantry unit gathering all Bengali soldiers from military and EPO units in Chittagong. He designated it Sector No. 1 with its headquarters in Subrum. A few weeks later, it was restructured officially under Bangladesh forces as the sector in the Chittagong and Hill Tracts area, under General M. A. G. Osmani, the Supreme Commander of Bangladesh Forces, of the Provisional Government of Bangladesh Headquarters at at 8 Theatre Road, Calcutta. W.B., India. On June 30, 1971 Zia was appointed the commander of the 1st Conventional Brigade of the Bangladesh Forces, which was named Z Force, after the first initial of his name, followed by K Forces in August and S Force in September, named after Major Khaled Musharraf and Major Shafula respectively. His brigade consisted of 1st, 3rd and 8th East Bengali regiments, enabling Zia to launch major attacks on Pakistani forces. With the Z Force, Zia acquired a reputation for icy bravery according to the New York Times, and was awarded the Bharatam, the second highest military honor by the government of Bangladesh. 
assassination of Mujib in 1975 and its aftermath. On August 15, 1975 President Mujib Rahman and his family were assassinated at home as part of a military coup. One of Mujib Rahman's cabinet ministers and a leading conspirator Khondaka Mustaq Ahmad gained the presidency and following the removal of Major General K. M. Shafula, appointed Zia Rahman army chief. However, the coup of August 15 caused a period of instability and unrest in Bangladesh and in the ranks and files of the army. Brigadier Khaled Musharraf and the 46th Brigade of Dhaka Cantonment under Colonel Shafat Jamal staged a counter coup on November 3, 1975, and Zia Rahman was forced to relinquish his post and put under house arrest. This was followed by on November 7, a mutiny staged by the Jatiyo Se Martin Trikdal under retired Lieutenant Colonel Abu Taya and a group of socialist military officers. Khaled Musharraf was killed and Colonel Jamal arrested while Zia Rahman was freed by the 2nd Artillery Regiment under Lieutenant Colonel Rashid and reappointed him as Army Chief. Following a meeting at Army Headquarters, an interim government was formed with Justice Abu Sadat Muhammad Sayyam as Chief Martial Law Administrator and Major General Zia Rahman, Air Vice Marshal M. G. Torb and Rear Admiral M. H. Khan as his deputies. However, Discipline in the army had totally collapsed and it was difficult to disarm the soldiers and put them back to the barracks. Suspicious that Abu Taya would organize a revolt, Zian ordered his arrest and Taya was executed on July 21, 1976. Zia became the chief martial law administrator following Justice Sayam's elevation to the presidency on November 19, 1976. He tried to integrate the armed forces giving repatriates a status appropriate to their qualifications and seniority. While this angered some veterans of the independence war, who had rapidly reached high positions following independence in 1971, Zia sent discontented officers on diplomatic missions abroad to defuse unrest. President of Bangladesh Zia Rahman became the seventh president of Bangladesh on April 21, 1977. Years of disorder from the previous political administration of the Awami League and Baxal had left most of Bangladesh's state institutions in disarray, with constant internal and external threats. Assuming full control of the state, Zia lifted martial law and introduced massive reforms for the development of the country. In late September 1977, a group of Japanese Red Army terrorists hijacked an airplane and forced it to land in Dhaka. On September 30, while the attention of the government was riveted on this event, a mutiny broke out in Bogra. Although the mutiny was quickly quelled on the night of October 2, a second mutiny started in Dhaka, led by disgruntled airmen of BAF. The mutineers unsuccessfully attacked Zia's residence, captured Dhaka radio for a short time and killed a good number of Air Force officers and airmen at Tegain International Airport where they were gathered for negotiations with the hijackers. Wing Commander M. Hamid Allah Khan BP, then BAF Ground Defense Commander, quickly put down the rebellion within the Air Force, but the government was severely shaken. Chief of Air Staff AVMAG Mahmud reappointed Wing Commander Hamid Allah as Provost Marshal of Bangladesh Air Force. Government intelligence had failed and Zia promptly dismissed the DGFI Chief, AVM Aminul Islam Khan BAF, of 9th GD formerly of PAF, and also the DGNSI. In the aftermath at least 200 soldiers involved in the coup attempt were executed following a secret trial, prompting some critics to call Zia ruthless. The size of Bangladesh police forces was doubled and the number of soldiers of the army increased from 50,000 to 90,000. In 1978 he appointed Hussein Muhammad Ershad as the new chief of army staff, promoting him to the rank of lieutenant general. He was viewed as a professional soldier with no political aspirations who possessed a soft corner for India. Quietly Ershad rose to became Zia's close politico-military counselor. In 1981 he brought back Mujib's daughter Hasina was to Bangladesh. Equals elections equals, Zia reintroduced multi-party politics in 1978, General Zia ran for and an overwhelmingly won a five-year term as president. The next year elections were held for the National Assembly. Opponents questioned the integrity of the elections. He allowed Sheikh Hasina, the exiled daughter of Sheikh Mujibur Rahman to return to Bangladesh in 1981. 
equals domestic and foreign policies equals, on taking power, Zia was hailed as the strict leader that struggling nation needed. Bangladesh suffered from illiteracy, severe poverty, chronic unemployment, shortages and economic stagnation. Zia reversed course from his predecessor Mujib's secular, democratic socialist, pro-Indian policies. Zia announced a 19-point program of economic emancipation which emphasized self-reliance, rural development, decentralization, free markets and population control. Zia spent much of his time traveling throughout the country, preaching the politics of hope, and urging Bangladeshis to work harder and to produce more. He held cabinet meetings all across Bangladesh. Zia focused on boosting agricultural and industrial production, especially in food and grains, and to integrate rural development through a variety of programs, of which population planning was the most important. He introduced and opened the Bangladesh Jute and Rice Research Institutes. He launched an ambitious rural development program in 1977, which included a highly visible and popular food for work program. He promoted private sector development, exports growth and the reversing of the collectivization of farms. His government reduced quotas and restrictions on agriculture and industrial activities. Zia launched major projects to construct irrigation canals, power stations, dams, roads and other public works. Directing his campaign to mobilize rural support and development, Zia established Gram Saka system of self-government and the village defense party system of security and crime prevention. Programs to promote primary and adult education on a mass scale were initiated and focused mainly across rural Bangladesh. During this period, Bangladesh's economy achieved fast economic and industrial growth. Zia began reorienting Bangladesh's foreign policy addressing the concerns of the mostly staunch rightists coupled with some renegade leftists who believed that Bangladesh was reliant on Indian economic and military aid. Zia moved away from India and the Soviet bloc, his predecessors had worked with, developing closer relations with the United States and Western Europe, Africa and the Middle East. Zia also moved to harmonize ties with Saudi Arabia and the People's Republic of China, Pakistan's ally who had opposed Bangladesh's creation and had not recognized it until 1975. Zia moved to normalize relations with Pakistan. While distancing Bangladesh from India, Zia sought to improve ties with other Islamic nations. Zia's move towards Islamic state policies improved the nation's standing in the Middle East. Zia also proposed an organization of the nations of South Asia to bolster economic and political cooperation at a regional level. This proposal materialized in 1985 under the presidency of Hussein Mohammad Ershad with the first meeting of the South Asia Association for Regional Cooperation in Dhaka. Zia's vision has earned him a posthumous award from the organization. Equals Islam and nationalism equals Zia believed that a massive section of the population was suffering from an identity crisis, both religious and as a people, with a very limited sense of sovereignty. To remedy this he began a re-Islamization of Bangladesh. He issued a proclamation order amending the constitution, under whose basis laws would be set in an effort to increase the self-knowledge of religion and nation. In the preamble, he inserted the salutation by Zmilaya Ramani Rahim. In Article 8, 1, and 8, 1a, the statement Absolute Trust and Faith in Almighty Allah was added, replacing the socialist religious free commitment to secularism. Socialism was redefined as economic and social justice under his leadership. In Article 25, 2, Zia introduced the principle that the state shall endeavor to consolidate, preserve and strengthen fraternal relations among Muslim countries based on Islamic solidarity. Some intellectuals accuse Zia of the nature of the republic from the secularism laid out by Sheikh Mujib and his supporters. However, critics of this accusation say the rationale is absurd and an oversimplification since secular leaders like Gamal Abdel Nasser and Ahmed Ben Bell adopted this policy, and that religious slogans and symbolism are also used by the Awami League. Later Ershad introduced Islamic religious education as a compulsory subject in Bangladeshi schools, with provisions for non-Muslim students to learn of their own religions. At the birth of Bangladesh, 
many Islamists had supported the Pakistani army's fight against independence and been barred from politics with the Bangladesh Collaborators Order of 1972. Zia ended this as well as the ban on communal parties and associations. In public speeches and policies that he formulated, Zia began expounding Bangladesh nationalism, its sovereignty, as opposed to Mujib's assertion of a Bengali identity based on the language-based nationalism. Zia emphasized the national role of Islam as guide to life's principle. Claiming to promote an inclusive national identity, Zia reached out to non-Bengali minorities such as the Sandals, Garos, Manipuris and Kakmas, as well as the Urdu-speaking peoples of Bihari origin. He even amended the constitution to change the nationality of the citizens from Bengali, an ethnic identity, to Bangladeshi, a national identity, under sovereign allegiance not political belief or party affiliation. However, Bangladeshi nationalism excluded the country's non-Muslim minorities, particularly the Hindu community. After the formation of Bangladesh Nationalist Party in 1978, Zia took initiative for formation of political institutes and sponsored workshops for the youth to get active political lessons on Bangladesh nationalism. In such a workshop in September 1980, Zia spoke to the learners. Equals Indemnity Act equals. Zia enacted several controversial measures, some to discipline the army some to solidify his power and some to win the support of right-wing political groups such as the Jamaati Islami. However, with the exception of ex-president Khondaka Mustaq Ahmad, whom he sent to jail on theft charges, he took no action against Awami League leaders who were infamous for corruption. He also allowed leaders of the banned Jamaati Islami to run for office under a different name. Zia was criticized for lifting their ban as Jamaati Islami had collaborated with the Pakistan army and committed war crimes fighting against Bangladeshi independence. The exiled chief of the Jamaati Islami, Ghulam Azam, was allowed to come back and visit his ill mother to Bangladesh in July 1978 with a Pakistan passport on a visitor's visa, and allowed to stay in Bangladesh following his visa's expiration without a court case lodged against him for his alleged role in wartime atrocities. Zia also facilitated the comeback of the Muslim League and other Islamic parties, appointed the highly controversial anti-independence figure Shah Aziz Rahman Prime Minister. Zia gave foreign appointments to several men accused of assassinating Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. Major Dalim, Major Rashid, and Major Farouk were given jobs in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and in subsequent years they were appointed ambassadors of Bangladesh to African and Middle Eastern nations. The indemnity ordinance was proclaimed by Khondaka Mustaq Ahmad in 1975 President, ratified in the Parliament as the Indemnity Act, and incorporated as the Fifth Amendment to the Constitution during the tenure of President Hussein Muhammad Ershad. Assassination During his term of power, Zia was criticized for ruthless treatment of his army opposition. Although he enjoyed overall popularity and public confidence, Zia's rehabilitation of some of the most controversial men in Bangladesh aroused fierce opposition from the supporters of the Awami League and veterans of its Mukti Bahini. Amidst speculation and fears of unrest, Zia went on tour to Chittagong on May 29, 1981 to help resolve an intra-party political dispute in the regional BNP. Zia and his entourage stayed overnight at the Chittagong Circuit House. In the early hours of the morning of May 30, he was assassinated by a group of army officers. Also killed were six of his bodyguards and two aides. Nearly two million people are estimated to have attended the funeral held at the Parliament Square. Criticism and Legacy Zayal Rahman's role during and after August 15, 1975 assassination of Sheikh Mujibur Rahman and his family, is controversial. The Indemnity Act an ordinance ordered by Khondaka Mustaq Ahmad in 1975 pardoning the subsequently convicted killers of President Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, was legalized by Zia during his tenure as president. Also deeply controversial is Zia's rehabilitation of persons and political groups that had collaborated with the Pakistani army, such as the Jamaati Islami. In a verdict passed on the Dhaka High Court declared the seizures of power by military coups between 1975 and 1979, including Zia's military regime as unlawful and unconstitutional. Zia's martial law decrees, 
his ascendancy to the presidency in 1977 and the referendum held in 1978 were declared unknown to the Constitution. The court ruling overruled the Indemnity Act by which these very events were accorded a legal status and enshrined in the Constitution. Zia is credited for ending the disorder of the final years of Sheikh Mujib's rule and establishing democracy by abolishing Bakshal. On the other hand, Zia is assailed by his critics for suppressing opposition. However, Zia's economic reforms are credited with rebuilding the economy and his move towards Islamization brought him the support of ordinary Bangladesh people. His nationalist vision also appealed to many who resented the other political parties' alleged inclination towards India and the Soviet Union. Moving away from Mujib secularism, Zia asserted an Islamic political identity for Bangladesh and of membership in the wider community of Muslim nations which was applauded by the general mass. However, these measures also isolated and embittered many ethnic and religious minorities in Bangladesh, laying in the opinion of many historians, the foundations of future communal and ethnic conflicts. However, critics of this view point out that this is an oversimplification, and Zia alone cannot be held responsible. It is generally acknowledged that he lived a simple life which included opting to have his food supplied from the army canteen. Zial Rahman is survived by his wife Begum Khalida Zia and his son Tek Rahman. He had another son, the late Arafat Rahman. Begum Khalida Zia became the head of the BNP and organized a coalition of political parties opposed to Ershad's regime. In elections held in 1991, Begum Khalida Zia led the BNP to victory and became prime minister. She lost the 1996 elections to the Awami League's Sheikh Hasina Waged, the daughter of Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, but returned to power in 2001. Tek Rahman serves as BNP Senior Joint Secretary, regarded by many as the architect of the BNP's 2001 election victory. Zia has been the namesake of many public institutions, such as formerly the Zia International Airport in Dhaka, which is the busiest airport in the nation. Turkey has named an important road in Ankara as Zia Rahman Kadisi after his death to honor him. Zia has been honored by the South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation for his statesmanship and vision. Zia Rahman was also honored with Egypt's highest state honor Order of the Nile. Great Star, the highest state honor of former Yugoslavia and a hero of the Republic from North Korea during his lifetime for his leadership. References Further reading Senator Gupta, Jyoti. History of Freedom Movement in Bangladesh, 1943-1973, Some Involvement. Asin B0006CINE2. Malam, William B. Bangladesh and Pakistan Flirting with Failure in South Asia. ISBN 978-1-85065-921-1. Malam. William B. Bangladesh and Pakistan Flirting with Failure in South Asia. Columbia University Press. ISBN 978-0-231-70066-5. Muscarin Haas, Anthony. Bangladesh A Legacy of Blood. Hodder and Stoughton. ISBN 978-0-340-39450-5. Baxter, Craig. Bangladesh from a Nation to a State. Westview Press. ISBN 978-0-8133-2854-6. Baxter, Craig. Government and Politics in South Asia. Westview Press. ISBN 978-0-8133-3901-6. External links. Zial Rahman Biography, Zial Rahman on Virtual Bangladesh, Sahare, Chandan. AOEAAAA Pamela AAAAA, Zial Rahman. Gunnigan Trust. U.S. State Department Secret Telegram on Bangladesh Declaration of Independence, former U.S. President Jimmy Carter on President Zial Rahman, Khalida Zia, the most potential mediator to resolve ME crisis.